throat of Wilson like lightning gives it the gotch. Now, where's Quinlan? Out on the lead. Here's a charge. You've got this one. It will be a prodigious kick. Everybody saying, have a shot, no matter where you are. It'll be the torpedo, will it? No, I think he might use the drop punt. Hi, oh, it's long. It's there. It's 100. 100 goals to Bernie Quinlan, and here they come in their thousands. Paris direct play towards centre half forward. Quinlan! Bernie Quinlan. Quinlan reached the peak of his powers in the twilight of his career winning the 1981 Brownlow medal at the age of 30, finishing runner-up in Fitzroy's best and fairest award over three successive years, and leading the club's goal kicking in every season from 1981 to 1985. How good is that old AFL highlights music? It really brings back some good memories for me. Anyway, that was Bernie Quinlan, a man that started the most famous bunch ride here in Melbourne, and I'd have to say Australia, way back in 1984, which is now called The Hell Ride. In this video, I'm gonna share with you a discussion I had with Bernie earlier this week at O'Mara Cycles Cafe about the history of The Hell Ride. Now, if you're not familiar with Bernie, he is a legend of the VFL slash AFL, or Aussie rules. He played 366 games. He won a Brownlow medal, which is the best and fairest in the league. He won two Colmer medals, so he kicked the most goals in the league two years in a row. And in 1984, he took up bike riding with two other guys here in Black Rock and started a bunch ride, which is now known as the Hell Ride. I personally went into this discussion really focused and eager to learn more about the history of the Hell Ride. And Bernie certainly goes into that into some depth. In fact, the conversation came about from a documentary that we were looking to create at the back end of last year on the Bike Chaser platform regarding the Hell Ride, and I reached out to the Western Bulldogs and asked for Bernie's contact details. Now, if you want some details on what happened with the documentary and future content on this channel about the Hell Ride, uh, consider subscribing, but also stick around at the end of the discussion, I'm gonna go into some details about that topic. However, for now, regarding my discussion with Bernie, I left Omara Cycles Cafe earlier this week inspired by the activity, once again, of cycling. Bernie explains how he took up bike riding to manage an injury he obtained in the early 80s. Not only that, and as you saw at the start of the video in the highlights package, Bernie had quite a successful twilight period of his career, some would argue his best. And bike riding, as Bernie puts it, was a massive factor in prolonging his career an absolute AFL great. I hope you enjoy this discussion. So what, what I was keen to understand is you started riding in 1984 um, when you got an injury, an Achilles injury, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. I was getting a bit, I was coming towards the end of my football in Korea. I played in 81 with an Achilles injury. Okay. That was debilitating at the time. So I had an operation at the end of 81 on my right Achilles. So 82, I played centre half forward and at the end, my left Achilles was playing up. I had an operation on my left Achilles. Right. So at the start of 80, 83, that, uh, we trained actually out of the old Fitzroy ground, in the Brunswick Street ground, and my Achilles flared up again after the operation, and it took me ages forever to get back playing, and that's how I ended up at full forward. I couldn't play centre forward. Oh. So I went to, went to uh, full forward because it was in those days, you weren't running up and down the ground as they are these days. Yeah, so okay. full forward was a, an area where I could protect it a little bit better yeah, okay. than what I could have done if I was playing centre half forward. Interesting. So you took up um, riding in 84, was it? That yeah, was like it, a, was. A, it was. It yeah. was, Is that a running for fitness? Is this it was, Yeah, because I, I, I was really keen on fitness and I, I moved to Black Rock and moved just around the corner in um, Second Street. Yeah, okay. So I had a, a, a mate who it turned out to be a mate He's no longer with us. He's passed away quite a few years ago. A guy named Peter McGeorge. Okay. And um, footy as well? he was a bit of a legend around the Black Rock area. Oh, okay. He'd run marathons and he was just into all sorts of sport. Right. So he knocked on the door one day and I got to know him really well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we decided that we'd start, um, start a bike ride with another fellow, Rob Cork. Okay. So the three of us decided that we'd uh, get a bike and, and get into the bike riding yeah, okay. for fitness. So, you know, it was good for me because my Achilles didn't allow me to do all the running, so yeah. the bike riding substituted substituted the bike riding for all the running. 
So did you do the bike riding during footy season or just sort of pre-season? No, pre-season. Pre-season stuff? Pre-season, okay. yeah. Yep. So early 84 is when you started the... Early 84 it would have yeah. been, yeah. yeah okay. Early 84. And where did you start from when you were riding? We started at the, uh, the uh, clock tower. Oh, okay. And early days we probably went down to uh, around about Seaford Road. Yeah. But it developed from there and we went up through uh, Mount Eliza to the route that they do these days. Oh, okay. The full route of the um, of the Hell Ride these days. On on the Pen Highway or on, on the Pen Highway, and yeah. we cut off at Morty Alec and went down Station Street, then back on the Morty Alec down at Carrum. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it was all on uh, the Pen Highway mainly. Yeah. Did it did it start off as a bit of a race, or were you just no just no? Well, look, he was a very competitive guy, and I played a lot of tennis with him as well. <laughs> Which one was this? Peter McGeorge. Oh, okay, right. He was a very competitive guy. So any bike ride that we did, yeah, he'd always be pushing the pushing the limits and pushing the boundaries. Right. Oh, okay. I was very keen on uh, making a bit of a contest all the time. Yeah, right. So early days, we'd ride back and we might do two minutes at the front, the guy would pull over and the next guy would go through. So it was a pretty pretty hectic from Seaford all the way back. Yeah, okay. Did it, was it a race at the end? At the yeah. race, we used to race to uh, Second Street. That was the finishing line. Oh, okay. I don't know what they do these days. No, it's just up here. There's a street sign near the... Oh, okay. Out. No, we yeah. used to finish. We used to have the sprint to Second Street. Oh, okay. Who used to take out the sprint? Oh, you know, it was varied. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I can't remember exactly. And so it was just the three of you initially. When did it the start? three of us initially. And then when did it start picking up numbers? Um, I just I can't remember exactly how how we um, was it used. Someone knew someone, and then someone knew someone else, and all of a sudden, you know, you'd have ten or twenty, or that suddenly developed. Yeah, right. And so the way you, it went. So, so you were you wouldn't have done it during the footy season. Not during the footy so season. So did you no. come back and do it at the end of the footy season for fit, fitness and yeah. sort of look at it and go, wow, there's more people here? Or yeah, that? yeah, yeah. I used I started again at the end of the football season. Yeah. And um, I continued right on basically from the end of the footy season right through until pre-season started with the footy club. Yeah. But I'd still do bike rides occasionally, not not continuing on the hell ride all the time. Yeah, okay. So was the it, three, was, it wasn't called the hell ride back then though, was it? Uh, well, you know, we didn't, we just turned up as three mates having a ride. So it wasn't called So anything. we didn't call it anything. Right. And we just turned up, uh, had a ride and away we went. Yeah, okay. Well, we're probably getting a bit ahead of ourselves if we're starting to, <laughs> start, yeah. starting to think we're, we're naming a bike ride after ourselves or something like that. Yeah, so, it, so it, was, it was the Frankston Derby before the Hell Ride. Did you, did you know uh, how the Frankston Derby? Well, no, I didn't. No, I never knew it as the Frankston Derby. And so how many years did you do it for? Uh, how long? Did I, I probably did it... I don't know, it might have been five or six years. Okay. I reckon it might have even been a bit longer. Yeah, right. It could have been, I'm not sure. So, so post footy season, or post footy career? You uh, post footy career, I did, yeah. yeah kept okay. going, yeah. Yeah, right. Because a few of the, um, I did a bit of work with Footscray, with the Bulldogs. Yeah. And so a couple of the, um, couple of their boys came and did, pro- I got them down here to do a bit of pre season on the bike. And one of them, a bloke called Johnny Ballantyne, he still, he played at Footscray and Collingwood. Yeah. And he's still really keen. He's turned into a really keen bike rider. Oh, right. He was doing the hell ride. I don't know whether he's still doing it or not. Yeah, I haven't well, spoken to him for a while. Well, over the years, there's been quite like Chris Grant. Yeah. The well, it, we started. I started those guys off too. Oh, did you? And there was a guy called Glenn Coleman and you know, Danny Delray. And, yeah. And a few of the Fitzroy boys did it as well. Yeah, okay. Uh, Michael Roberts, I know Michael Roberts did it. He came to Fitzroy. And, oh, so when um, you were a fitness coach, you were telling them to come down and do it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, okay. it was a bit of a rehab for some of the blokes. Oh, okay. So they came down and did the bike ride, and some of them got really keen. Right. Yeah. And what did the club think about them riding their bikes in a fast bunch ride? No, like back then, they didn't care? No, they were quite happy. They were yeah, quite okay. happy. Um, very happy for them doing the extra work. It was terrific for them. Yeah, interesting. Mm. And then... When you were doing it, when did you see the numbers really, like what were the numbers? Oh, like there were some big about? numbers at the end, some big numbers. And there were some good bike riders, I don't know the names of them, but there yeah, was some, yeah. you know, some good triathletes turning up and yeah. and um, I was just a plotter, but right. But uh, I got pretty fit to doing the bike ride, it was yeah. fantastic. What was it like back then, was it like pretty controlled or was it like pretty hectic? Or? Uh, it was pretty hectic. Yeah? <laughs> it was pretty hectic. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, it's... You didn't like to be left behind yeah. when you got to lights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so occasionally a few of the riders might have gone through a little bit late. Yeah, yeah. But not, I wouldn't say uh, without taking precautions. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. wouldn't just get to a red light and race straight through. I might be too far down the track to um, to pursue now as far as legal matters goes, but I think I, think I might have gone through a red light a well, couple of times. I think we all have. I, I have. Yeah, um, yeah. I think you get caught in those situations yeah. where you're, the bunch is halfway through, exactly. it goes red, exactly, and yeah. you've you got riders behind you, you're going at a certain speed. Exactly, that's but right. One of the, the many nuances of 
the, the Hellride. Back then, though, like the Hellride gets quite criticised today about these things happening. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a lot more focus of the driver. There's a lot more drivers on the road these days. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot more. Well, I'm, I don't know if there is a lot more. It's the question I've got for you. There's, there's obviously a lot of anger towards cyclists. Um, on the road these days from motorists? Was it like that back in the 80s uh, when you were doing it? I don't know about anger, but I, I can't remember really that much anger when I was out on the road. But I, I think the uh, the motorists probably get a bit upset when the player and when the riders drift out too far on the... You know, I, I know we can ride two abreast, but sometimes when it gets a bit keen, they're all over the road. That's yeah, when, okay. the, you know, because the competitive urge is amongst all these riders and they want to be... They don't want to be left behind and and all that sort of thing, but you know, the, you can understand the motorists at the time getting a little bit upset when they're drifting out into the other lane and yeah, yeah. and so forth. Yeah, so there was a little bit of that back in there the was day. A, there was a little bit of angst, yeah, a little yeah. bit, but I wouldn't say it was over, it was a massive amount. Yeah, okay. And what did you enjoy about, you know, now you reflect on the hell ride when you were doing it, what did you enjoy most about uh, it? Yeah, look, look, it was a really, it was a bit of a social event as well, you turn up and You'd see your mates that you hadn't seen all week, and it was good to see them again. And away you'd go, and you, you know you got a bit of you got out there in the fresh air, and you're getting exercise. Yeah. And it was competitive, and uh, you, you're gaining terrific fitness out of it. Yeah. Did you have a coffee afterwards? Like everyone had. A no, we didn't. No, no, we didn't in those days. Oh, uh, I think we, I think we just dispersed. All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Went and collapsed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get those shaky legs working again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's that's, interesting that. You, like, I just thought that you guys would have come up with the name. No, um, no. I mean, there's only three of us. So. Yeah, no, but like when it got bigger. Like, no, I just, no. I, I don't even know how it became the Hellride. Yeah. I, I can't remember it all of a sudden becoming the Hellride. I don't know how that happened. What's your feeling towards now that it's become this big, like the most renowned bunch ride in Australia? It just started like in the 80s with three of you. What do, what do you... Oh, well, I suppose it's, uh, it's something that's uh, not bad when you look back on. That was three bo- bozos from around here. <laughs> I started it, <laughs> and now it's a pretty big thing. Yeah, well now it's, I mean, in the cycling culture in Victoria, it really is an institution, Yeah. and I know yeah. um, a lot of the keen road cyclists in Australia, whenever they come to Melbourne, the first thing that they want to do is, do the is go do the hell ride. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a pretty good feeling, that it's got grown from three, as I say, bozos from around here, Yeah. and all of a sudden it's uh, so well-renowned. Yeah. and look, It's terrific. Even, even I know a lot of um, cyclists who are sort of got young families or um, or whatnot. They, they they like the fact that it's their it is their one week weekly release. Yeah, right. They're too busy during the week. Yeah, yeah. Um, Saturday morning they're off the chain. Is it still seven o'clock? Uh, seven o'clock. Yep. Yep. Um, out the, sort of out the front of here actually. Oh yeah. A lot of cyclists come in here. Yep. Um, have a pre ride coffee. Yeah, so right. The coffee seems massive in cycling. Yeah, right? yeah, so yeah. They'll come in here for a pre ride coffee, do the hell ride. Um, and then they'll go to a cafe once they've finished, have a chat with their mates. So it's yep. a bit of a social thing as well. Oh, yeah. Um, and then the real keen ones, they do the Hell Riders warm up and yep. then they go to the Dandenongs. Mm. Go right <laughs> out to the Dan. <laughs> That's, that's massive. Yeah, I don't know whether I had that in my legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When did you stop riding? Oh, look. When did I stop riding? I did it most of the time I was here in Black Rock, just not not all the time the hell ride. Yeah. But um, all through the eighties, I reckon. I probably I probably gave it away uh, maybe early nineties. Yeah. Because I was working at Channel Seven. Yeah. So. Um, you know, a lot of the time you're interstate doing the footy commentary. Yeah. From from '88 onwards, I started. Uh, when did I start it? Yeah, '88 I started at Channel Seven. So yeah, then it became pretty awkward to be doing the Hell Ride when you had to do a lot of footy commentary. You'd be knackered. You'd be knackered. Yeah. yeah you'd yeah. be going to sleep you'd be falling asleep during <laughs> the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, for, for your footy career, like yeah. when towards the end of your season you started doing for fitness, how did you find cycling for your AFL fitness? Because obviously AFL is quite short first running, um, whereas cycling is a bit more endurance based. How did you find Oh, that? it was great. It yeah. was great. You know, I mean, anything you can do. I, I turned up, I reckon I was as fit as I've probably ever been doing the riding. Yeah, okay. And I yes. played actually my last year, I was 86. And I'd been doing the bike riding, but we had a new coach that year, David Parkin, David. Yeah. And um, I was really, really fit. The body felt fantastic. I was coming up 35, but all of a sudden we're doing 10 400s and 20 hundreds and all this sort of stuff. 
yeah. and the Achilles started to play up again. So three weeks into the season, I was getting cortisone shots into the Achilles to get through the year, which is a, was a damn long year. So do, you, do you think maybe, did cycling help prolong your... The, oh, absolutely, but, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, for sure. Interesting. For sure. And also, you were quite... In, if you look at other footballers that sort of peak in their late twenties and then they sort of slide away after they hit thirty, you actually yeah. had quite a successful career between thirty and thirty five because it's, you won your brown though at twenty nine or thirty? Uh was thirty. Yeah. 30. In nineteen eighty one I turned thirty. Yeah. And, and, so, and two Colmans. And two Colmans uh, when I was thirty two and thirty three. Yeah. But I suppose it's the motivation, you know, whether I had the motivation to keep going. Yeah. And uh, fitness had always been something that I really enjoyed. Yeah. So I, uh, I really, I probably didn't get stuck into the weights until I was in my thirties properly. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the bike riding and the weights really prolonged my career. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. So that was a discussion with Bernie. I hope you enjoyed it. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, this came about based off a process that I was going through at the back end of last year when at Bike Chaser we were looking to create a documentary on the Hell Ride. So for those of you who are interested, I thought I'd just go through the details of what actually happened there and what the plans are on this channel for Hellride content moving forward. So I think we need to back the bus right up and I also am conscious that 35% of my subscribers actually come from outside of Australia. So I'm just gonna briefly explain to you what the Hellride is and then talk about what happened with the documentary and some of the content that I'm looking to create regarding the hell ride on this channel moving forward. So as you heard at the start of this video and during the discussion, the hell ride is the most renowned bunch ride here in Melbourne and Victoria and I'd have to say Australia. It leaves every Saturday morning from the Black Rock Clock Tower here in Melbourne and it heads down to a suburb called Mount Eliza, goes through a little village and comes back home. Now the ride is 62.5 kilometers in length typically takes about an hour and a half so it goes super quick speeds can hit well and truly over 50 kilometers an hour and the size of the bunch really depends on the time of the year but during the warmer months it can really swell to well over 100 maybe 150 some say up to 200 and as a result of those numbers on a road you can imagine there is some controversy that surrounds the hell ride there is a stigma attached to it personally i do the hell ride and i think a lot of the reasons why there is a stigma surrounding it is because it's quite misunderstood and that was one of the driving factors behind why i was personally so interested in creating a 360 degree comprehensive documentary on the hell ride. So this is where myself and Bike Chaser received a fair amount of criticism at the back end of last year. You see, we decided to take it to Kickstarter because we recognized we needed funding if we were to make a truly compelling documentary. I know how to use video equipment, but I don't know how to create a compelling documentary and we needed expertise and as a result, we needed funding. So we started a Kickstarter we took our story to one of the main papers here in Melbourne called The Herald Sun. In a bid to ease tension between motorists and cyclists, a documentary is being made about the controversial hell ride along Beach Road. Online cycling platform Bike Chaser is making a documentary about the hell ride, a 78 kilometre round trip from Black Rock to Mount Eliza, undertaken by up to 200 riders every Saturday. And we want to educate on bunch riding etiquette for the greater good of the cycling community, but also other road users. Like motorists, riders aren't perfect and they make mistakes. Lee Turner has taken part in the Hell Ride for 20 years and says the main issue is respect. So by being in the Herald Sun paper, we had no idea that our story would be picked up by some of the major television networks, Channel 7 and Channel 10. They had segments in their evening news on our documentary and Kickstarter campaign, as well as major radio stations, 3RW, ABC Radio, and some digital online news publications such as ABC Online. So it hit the press massively and we received a lot of heat because of it. It appeared to validate people's thoughts that we were either trying to shut the hell ride down or we were either trying to glorify the hell ride. And we were trying to do neither of those things. So to cut a long story short, we never received funding for the Hellride. Our Kickstarter campaign failed miserably. However, 
by being in the press, we got some significant exposure and our plan B was to see if we could get funding from a major organization. And we had a few that were quite interested, one in particular. We put all, all our eggs essentially in one basket and a couple of months ago, that major funder fell through as well. So right here, right now, as I'm talking to you, there will be no documentary on Bike Chaser on the Hell Ride. However, as I personally have interest in the Hell Ride, I will be running a series of videos on this YouTube channel right here about the Hell Ride. Obviously, this is the first one, being the history of the Hell Ride, and I'm thinking a couple more. And really, the, the purpose of doing this is because I think there is a major gap surrounding education. You see, when I started doing the Hell Ride 10 years ago, I had no idea about the Hell Ride, no idea about bunch riding skills, no idea about the fitness required, nothing. And there was nothing really available for me. I've got hours and hours and hours of footage on the Hell Ride, so I think we can really make some compelling videos and help educate people that are thinking about doing the Hell Ride or just purely want more information about this Melbourne Cycling Institution.